with uh, with Tolu being out uh, this week, obviously, what's kind of um, – I know you don't want to give away your plan, but and you may tell me, but you can't give away your plan. But does that mean more minutes for J.D. at the five or, or starting Cam at the four? Or obviously, you, you have some options there with your bench. Well, I mean, we've we've done it – played that way more than we played with Tolu, so it's pretty easy to figure out how we've been playing most of the year. So it's already explanatory. All you do is watch – 10 of our games that he didn't play in and see how we play. And any update on when Rocket may come back or are you not expecting him this week? He tested negative again for a third straight day today. So he'll be practicing today and, and taking the trip with us when he initially uh, showed symptoms on, uh, I guess it was Friday night, Thursday, yeah, Friday night, uh, the night before our game against Old Miss. He was displaying all the symptoms you would expect in a, a COVID case, and he, uh, um, you know, didn't feel good come game time. He couldn't have played probably either way, but uh, we wanted to make sure it wasn't COVID. And amazingly, he didn't get it. So he had some other kind of virus that uh, had him get a lot of the same symptoms. Because this today was the third day now he tested uh, negative for both. So he hasn't done anything since Friday, but. Uh, He'll uh, get a chance to practice and work out and, and make the trip and play tomorrow. Is there any, any – last question for me. With Tolu, obviously you guys came out with a statement yesterday week to week. What what kind of time frame are you thinking and, and what does couple he have? A couple of weeks would be uh, – you, know, you know, it's just like a sprained ankle. Everybody's different. You know, the sprained knee is obviously more, uh, you know, difficult than a sprained ankle uh, can be. But – uh, my best guesstimate is it'll be a couple of weeks before he's back, and that's being optimistic, which I like to be. Yeah, you know, there's a chance, a slight chance, it could be a few days earlier than that, but uh, there's also a chance it could be three weeks plus. You know, we just don't know. Everybody heals differently. Everybody responds differently. It's just sad. I watched it again yesterday, and happened with a minute twenty to go. Yeah, go ahead. It, uh, uh, coach, you guys. I'm are sorry, I'm still talking. To uh, so can you guys not hear me? You froze for a minute. They called on me. Okay, I'm sorry. I was still talking. I didn't know that <laughs> we were just bypassing my my uh, explanation to uh, Paul. But go ahead, Theo. Okay, uh, you guys are 11 and one at home so far. Two and four, two and four away from it. With the schedule that you guys have coming up, how important would a win tomorrow at Rupp Arena be? Every win is uh, critical and important. I mean, a, a win at Rupp Arena would be huge from the standpoint that they're one of the top teams in the country, and that automatically bolsters your resume if you can get a win like that in, a, in an incredibly tough venue against a great team that is playing really well, that's, uh, you know, very, very talented. They're in the top ten both in net and in the Ken Palm uh, rankings, and uh, deservedly so. They're really good. Let's go up to Lexington and Ben Roberts for a couple. Ben, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, obviously, DJ Jeffries was a guy who um, Kentucky really wanted out of high school, and I know you guys did too. Just how big of an addition was that for you guys this past offseason, and, and what has he meant uh, to your team so far this season? Yeah, he was a great addition. Uh, you know, he originally, I think, had verbaled to Kentucky maybe his junior year in high school or sophomore year. I can't remember which. It's so long ago now. Uh, then he reopened his recruiting up and uh, ultimately landed at Memphis before uh, arriving here uh, this summer. And we were just thrilled to get him. And, you know, he's one of our best defenders. He's a very smart player. Uh, he's, you know, a good all around player. You know, he can do uh, a lot of everything, rebound, pass, uh, handles the ball. Um, and again, one of our best defensive players, the most versatile players, and he can play multiple positions and defend multiple positions. Yeah, and given his history with Kentucky, is do you do you talk to him before this game, get him to settle down at all, or is it no. just kind of play game as normal? Yeah, we're just going normal. Yeah, and then uh, Ty Ty Washington obviously um, got hurt early in the in the game Saturday against Auburn. Uh, it sounds like he's day-to-day and maybe questionable for tomorrow night. From what you've seen, what does he bring to that Kentucky team? And, and do you game plan any differently at all, not knowing where he's going to be? Not really. I mean, I assume he'll play uh, not knowing. Uh, we'll plan uh, like he's normally going to be there. 
he uh, was amazing when Wheeler was out. I watched the game that he had 17 assists in. was just blown away by his uh, basketball IQ and how he saw the floor so well and how he shared the ball so well and still, you know, scored well. And he's in a, he's really an incredible scorer. You know, he's very good off the dribble. He's a good catch and shoot guy. He's got a great handle. Uh, very, very smart. Uh, he's just another one of, uh, you know, the typical, uh, you know, outstanding freshmen that have come through that program uh, over the years. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Andy, go ahead for a couple. Hey, ben, uh, obviously Oscar Shibwe is, is quite a player this year for, for Kentucky. How do, how do you try to match up with a guy like that and, and, and kind of slow him down, down low? Well, he's a monster. I mean, like he's his rebound numbers are just phenomenal. I'm amazed when I watch how well he uh, runs the floor. He runs the floor like a tank, uh, a very fast tank. I mean, he, he is he's incredibly uh, athletic and strong. And what's really fun to watch him and appreciate about him is everything is two handed. He has two hands on all his rebounds. He has two hands. On, uh, and everything he does, his hands are amazing how strong he is in his motor. And then you can't move him. Uh, he's immovable. I mean, like when he's at it, wherever he's at, he ain't moving. Uh, you know, it would take, you know, two or three guys to be able to move him once he's set where, he, where he's, you know, posting up or planting himself to get second shots. And you know, he's getting five offensive rebounds plus a game. I mean, He's, you know, uh, uh, just an incredible player and has been, uh, you know, arguably one of the best players in the country. I know, obviously, it would probably be nice to have Tolu to, to match up with him, but but you don't. So how do you kind of go about that matchup? And I guess how, how often do you try to double in a post? We do our best. We do the best we can do. And and what's really uh, problematic is just trying to block him out and keep him off the offensive glass. Uh, you know, as soon as his man leaves the help, on any penetration, they're just throwing the ball at the rim and he's dunking it. Uh, so it's really a tough one. Um, he, he creates a lot of, uh, you know, problems. Steph, go ahead for a couple. Ben, uh, obviously with uh, the frustrating season that, that Tolu's had kind of just in, in and out of the lineup, um, what was your conversation maybe like with him, you know, after the most you know, recent injury? And, and I guess how do you kind of keep his spirits up knowing that, you know, he could be back next season or this season in a couple of weeks? You know, it's just, uh, you know, thankfully he has a really good family, very supportive mom and dad that are uh, really good in terms of helping him remain positive. And, you know, as I had a conversation with his dad uh, just about the last episode when he had COVID was that, you know, he's, you know, Tolu is, you know, a very uh, godly young kid, and, um, you know, he's very prayerful. So um, he's strong mentally. And uh, this just, I mean, you know, as Dr. Jones, our team orthopedic surgeon, was saying, this this string of bad luck uh, that he's endured is incredible and hopefully over. Uh, but, you know, he's just got to, you know, keep fighting through the adversity that he's been having to deal with. Uh, John Calipari is going to be going for his 800th career win against you guys. Obviously, I'm sure you'd like to uh, delay that by at least uh, one more game. But, you know, what's your relationship kind of been like with him throughout the years? And, and how cool is it, I guess, to see him on the on the verge of another accolade? Yeah, John's done an amazing job during his career. You know, he's a Pittsburgh guy originally. So um, he was highly thought of when I arrived at Pitt. And uh, he uh, has had an amazing career. Um He's done a great job. He's taken three different programs to the Final Four. Uh, he, he's been phenomenal at Kentucky and uh, really had them consistent uh, throughout his tenure there. And, you know, has had, uh, you know, changed the game the way, uh, you know, they went with freshmen and, uh, you know, his recruiting classes have been amazing everywhere he's been, and especially at Kentucky. Uh, and he's got a lot left in him. I mean, I mean I'll, I'll – uh, you know, be happy for him when he gets to a thousand. But like you're right, I would like to hold off the 800 at least one more day. <laughs> and you mentioned there just the success that he's kind of had bringing in freshmen, but they've got a few grad transfers on their team who have, who have been pretty good for them this year. I mean, what, where do you kind of see their experience kind of fitting into this lineup with them? I think it's really unique, a Kentucky team. During the seven years I've been in the league, this is by far the oldest they've ever been. I think it's really played to their advantage. You know, Mintz being a six-year guy, Sheboy being a third-year guy. 
you know, Grady tra graduate transfer. I mean, you have a lot of, uh, you know, good players that have very good experience. Uh, you know, Wheeler's a, a, a third year player, a junior, you know, they play seven guys essentially, you know, uh, Toppin's really having a good year. I think he's, He's unheralded. I mean, Toppin's a very, very good player. Mintz has been playing amazing for him. So they, they're really talented. And uh, and then they have guys like Ware that come in and bang around and, you know, cause issues because of just his toughness and his strength. Uh, so they're they're really having a great year. And I think it's – I'm sure it's probably been fun for John to have a little, you know, more experience uh, to work with instead of just, you know, pure freshman this year. John Sokoloff, go ahead. And the stretch, I mean, we've been talking about Kentucky the last uh, 15 minutes or so, but this stretch with them, and then Saturday you're at Tech, you get a team that's probably going to be top 15 when the uh, new AP poll comes out. Based on your experience, how much do you kind of learn about your team when you go through hard stretches like this, when you play back-to-back -to -back top 15 teams kind of right in the heart of the season? You know, I was really looking forward to the stretch. I was just so disappointed. I mean, like after the game, I, I basically didn't have a, a, a normal uh, amount of elation and joy after, you know, a win over our rival uh, because of what happened to Tolu. And I'm just sad that uh, he's not available to play in these games for him and for us. That being said, we've got to go out and, you know, make some, uh, you know, a few alterations to try to, to take advantage of, uh, you know, playing a little differently without him. And uh, both those teams are great teams. I mean, you know, Kentucky has the potential to win uh, the whole thing without question. And uh, I think that Texas Tech has a chance to, to you know, you know, battle for their their league championship. I mean, the way they've been playing uh, defensively, he's done an amazing job. When you consider they lost so much from last year, went out and went to the transfer portal and really put together a great team that defends as well as anybody in the country. Theo, wrap us up. Sure. Uh, Kentucky doesn't take many threes. They don't get to the line that much. What kind of test will this be for your team's defense inside the arc? Well, it, the biggest test is going to be, uh, Theo, just getting back in transition. They're so good in transition. Like, if you watch their game against Tennessee, for example, uh, you know, they, they get out and they really run. They find Grady in transition. I mean, they're constantly looking to find him for that quick spot up three. He's so good, and they're so good at finding them. They attack the rim. They are great in transition. So that's the first and foremost. And then secondly, they have a great inside-outside attack because of Sheepway, he, he forces you to help inside. You can't handle them one-on-one. you got to either cover down with guards or, or help with other bigs. I mean, he's, he's just a load in there because of his size and his strength. Uh, and that they're very efficient with their offense. They really, uh, you know, do a good job taking good shots. And they're very efficient at both ends of the floor, actually, when you look at the Kim Palm rankings.